people's own sense of agency and motivation. And I wanted to, to close my presentation by highlighting a really important gap in, in the current evidence base and in the existing body of knowledge, which relates to the fact that most um, youth entrepreneurship programs to date do not really evaluate um, their youth engagement components in particular. Um, so there is a need to invest in monitoring and, and the impact evaluation of, of these youth engagement components within youth entrepreneurship programs to really understand which youth engagement mechanisms which lead to what kinds of outcomes for, for young people. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. Let's clap for Martha. Well done, Martha. That is very um, well thought through. I think it gives us a clear imagination of uh, what it looks like if we're going to engage the youth in terms of entrepreneurship in what we call the agroecological principles. So with me here, I have a panel that is going to discuss creating a conducive environment. I want to request again the ones who are up, team leaders, can you help us? Because we need attention on this side. Team leaders, can you help us that we close the stalls for now? Ca can we close the stalls for now and we come down? Kidogo Kwanza. Okay, the youths at the top, can you please come down and we shall return to the stalls later, please? East Africans. <laughs> I, I really now know what the leaders go through. But please kindly come down that we are all part of these conversations. Then later we shall return um, during the breakout sessions. But for now let's come back down because if you're up you're going to ask the same questions and we'll, we'll be going back in circles again and again. Kidogo, Kidogo Kwanza. Yes, come, come down a bit. Ah, yeah. So, just to offer clarity, if you're tweeting, please, the hashtag is Yalta Summit 22, not 2022. So, I was trying to look at our reach and we can't get it because some people are saying Summit 2022. The hashtag is Yalta Summit 22. So, if you're tweeting out from here, kindly have that. So with me, I have Nantume Hajara, a young entrepreneur from Uganda. Round of applause for her. She's here with us. And we have Dr. Banyus Tsegaye from Ethiopia. She's here with us as well. We have Matthew Mwendo from Kenya. And still we have Justin Mbabazi from Rwanda. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to start off with, um, with Dr. here, Dr. Banyush. Let's talk about the Acid Soils Reclamation Campaign. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. I will be sharing the experience of Yalta, Ethiopia in campaigning for acid soil reclamation. Is it not working? How do I do it? It's not working? Should I do it here? No. <laughs> okay, now it's coming. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can we have her sound raised a bit? Thank you. The tech is not taking. Let's try it again and see. 
Okay, to give you some uh, background information, uh, Ethiopia is uh, a country where agriculture is the mainstay and of, uh, about 85% of the population derives their livelihood from agriculture. And the low soil fertility is a limiting factor in crop production and uh, uh, soil acidity is uh, very serious, especially in the highlands. As you see on the map, uh, the ones with the dark red are uh, areas where the soil acidity problem is very re uh, high. And the data shows that about 41% of the land, cultivated land, is facing a soil acidity problem. And 28% are highly acidic. So the causes for soil acidity are uh, diverse. One is heavy rainfall leading to nutrient leaching, loss of soil nutrients, and use of uh, acid forming fertilizers like those having ammonium and removal of uh, crop residue. And the effects are that the soils are poor in terms of fertility and that means low production which is also expressed in contributing to uh, food insecurity. So soil acidity also limits the activity of useful soil microorganisms and in the worst case, the soil becomes uh, uh, non-productive. So in the figure here, you see that uh, land treated with lime and the other one is without lime. As you see, it's, uh, one treated with lime is uh, growing vigorously with dark green leaves and the other one is uh, a very poor stand. So this is a very uh, recent study. So. The options to manage soil acidity are diverse. One is application of lime. Another one is practicing integrated soil management practices. Another is using acid tolerant crop varieties. And the last one is uh, using balanced fertilizer amendment. You study the soil and what is missing will be recommended accordingly. So the benefits of lime application are many. It reduces soil pH creates favorable environment for plant growth and uh, reduces this aluminum and magnesium toxicity, which is a cause for soil acidity. It enhances uh, activities of soil microorganisms uh, and uh, so it is uh, contributing to better uh, conducive environment for uh, plant growth. What Yalta did is uh, uh, to a campaign for uh, acid soil reclamation through a lime application. It was part of the three-year project which Yalta Ethiopia has been running. And then uh, the strategy was engaging interested stakeholders who have the concern for acid soils. And both government and non-government institutions who are supporting that were uh, come into one force. So it's an experience working with government and which has shown a good result. So the campaign uh, started with, with uh, first studying a case study in uh, Jeldu, which is like west of Addis. So after studying, then the campaign continued on awareness creation and delivering training for farmers and experts in areas where uh, this um, case study has been done, and supplying inputs for selected farmers for on-farm demonstration, documenting the results and using that as a communication tool, networking with, uh, to build allies, as we said, a number of experts and NGOs working in that area were part of this, and then advocating, advocating for uh, or lobbying for policy change. This is part, uh, a picture from the training sessions held there. As you see, on the participants came from different offices, government office, from the district level, farmers and experts, the another NGO, Canadian Food Grain Bank, FH Ethiopia, GIZ, and Agro Pro Focus. So in the picture, you see that the trainees have also uh, had in-house training and then they had some visit to a lime processing factory. And the last one down there shows field demonstration on how to apply lime and uh, incorporate it into the soil. 
The outcomes of the campaign are that uh, government included lime as part of the regular agricultural input delivery system. Previously, it's only on the chemical fertilizers which are being supplied, so lime is uh, included as one of the inputs in areas affected by uh, soil acidity. The second outcome is that productivity of reclaimed farm plots increased and farmers are getting better harvest. And the third one is target community members learned about uh, simple testing of uh, soil acidity level. They have the tool and then uh, they were able to detect it right there. The key lesson from this experience is that use can be effective change engines by focusing on a specific team. In this case, it is acid uh, soil reclamation through lime application. So creating awareness, building alliance and solidarity with other relevant stakeholders, building effective networks and communication tools, documenting the evidences, and carrying out targeted advocacy work. So this would be uh, like what other youth also can do in their respective cases. And there are some opportunities to influence policies and research again. Uh, one is the education system, including agroecology and sustainable food systems in the school curricula will contribute to promote agroecology and sustainable food systems. And the other is the research component, uh, action-oriented research or problem-solving research, focusing on soil fertility management and soil health. We need soil uh, to be healthy so that it will uh, produce also healthy food. Participatory research, engaging farmers. Most of the time, research is doing um, independently and farmers are being left out. They have to be uh, active partners in the research process. And as agroecology is also promoting, there should be co-creation of knowledge. It's not one or the other, but build synergy and build on what farmers have learned through experience so far. Like the crop rotation, intercropping, relay cropping, these are important. Uh, important elements of agroecology that promote diversity and sustainable harvest. Uh, policy elements, uh, it's also important to promote integrated soil fertility management practices, focusing on what is locally available. External dependency cannot sustain, uh, ensure to sustain harvest uh, for the long run, so that should be a part of the policy. And the fourth element is conservation and management of on-farm diversity. So diversity is essential. As we are talking about food and nutrition security, we need to produce different things. We cannot produce only maize or rice, and that's not enough, so we need both. Or actually, African farmers are used to growing different crops, intercropping, rotation, and all that, so we need to promote, revitalize that again. And under the growing challenge of climate change, we also need diversity. So these are the key points which uh, youth can engage in for influencing policy. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Banyush. Um, given that she has been alluding to policy and all, Matthew Mwendo, let's talk about the youth engagement in policy processes at the country level. Um, my tech team, can we have um, Matthew's presentation there before we actually dive into? And those uh, tweeting about the conversation here, the hashtag is Yalta Summit 22, not 2022, 22. Ah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Matthew Mwendo uh, from Pelham, Kenya. I work as a program officer at Pelham, Kenya and also DABU is the Ecological Organic Agriculture Initiative Coordinator for the Eastern Africa region. So thank you, I'm really honored to be in this uh, uh, Yalta Summit, which is a really, really a quite good event. So in Kenya, uh, uh, we are really uh, had this uh, youth involvement in policy initiatives or policy processes as a, um, as a way to engage youth in issues of uh, policy formulation. So we had the, the Kenya Youth in Agroecology Policy Initiative, which is um, really driven to have uh, youth participate in policy processes. There was a working uh, group uh, in Agroecology Policy Initiatives. 
which was uh, really aimed at uh, strengthening youth platforms uh, such that they are able to participate in agroecology policies and related sustainable uh, agriculture. The group comprises of organizations that uh, promote uh, agroecology and sustainable agriculture uh, in practice and um, also these organizations engage in policy influencing both at national level and uh, at county levels. Uh, in our country we have two levels of governance whereby we have the national government and also county level which has a uh, is engaged in policy uh, formulation uh, processes. The group has uh, youth representatives, which are uh, the ones who are participating in the ALTA uh, campaigns or the ALTA mentorship program. And um, just to mention the Kenyan uh, working group, or uh, the reference group uh, was comprised of around 15 organizations. And these organizations uh, cut across in various categories. They are farmer organizations. We have um, agro entrepreneurs. We have uh, CBOs, that is community-based organizations, development uh, organizations, all of uh, which promote um, agroecology and uh, sustainable agriculture as a whole. Um, to mention uh, Pelham, Kenya, uh, which was part of uh, this uh, uh, reference group, uh, really played a major role in uh, mobilizing the youths. Um, first, is a member of the Yalta reference group and was playing part of some coordination and also support of these uh, working group activities, especially for the youth. Uh, Pelham Kenya organized uh, agroecology actors, meetings, also had county learning workshops to promote agroecology and also organizing youth, uh, youth coalition meetup. That is towards now uh, uh, getting to know and understand policy processes uh, that um, are leading towards the uh, agroecology promotion. Uh, how Pelham is suited, how is um, had uh, this role uh, playing or coming out clearly is that uh, Pelham, is a, Pelham Kenya is a network of 57 organizations, all of which are promoting agroecological practices. And these organizations are spread across 42 counties out of the 47 counties in Kenya. Uh, thus, this brings more support towards realizing a youth-driven agroecology movement in Kenya. Also to note is that uh, as, a, as an organization, Pelham Kenya has one of its uh, strategic focus being youth and women inclusion in agroecology. So that um, positions uh, Pelham Kenya in, and its member organizations in mobilizing youths to take part in agroecology as well as uh, sustainable agriculture as a whole. Uh, at this, um, we can mention some of the some of the achievements. Is that um, uh, supporting youth to participate in the policy processes and also uh, dialogues at county level was a really a good initiative because they were able to influence or to put across their agenda in relation to agroecology and uh, have these policies and plans integrated at county plans and uh, county policy frameworks. Uh, for example, we have uh, specific counties which are uh, on their way uh, at different levels making uh, policy frameworks and uh, plans that really touch on agroecology. We have uh, around six uh, counties. We have Kiambu County, Moranga County, Meru, Viga, County, which are developing uh, agroecology policies. And then we also have uh, Muranga County, which is working on uh, organic agriculture policy, which is a, a policy also within the agroecology uh, sector. Busia County is on the way to develop a biodiversity policy. 
then uh, Viga County is going uh, in discussions to have farmers be supplied with the organic fertilizers. Uh, so, so again, the Yalta uh, youth were able to participate in some of the activities like um, budget making processes at county level. Uh, as I said, uh, in uh, Kenya, we have agriculture as an evolved function. It's being implemented at county level. Uh, the county governments are able to do plans, to draw budgets, uh, to do also policy frameworks which um, are to advance or to deliver service on agriculture. So one way was to have budget uh, processes which are done annually, and the youth, the youth are able to participate and also give views on how some of the interventions in agriculture can be agroecology related. Uh, there were also videos and documentaries uh, uh, done really to give uh, information and uh, continue to educate uh, the public and all other actors in agroecology. Then uh, there were some meetings of the youth uh, to promote networking, uh, to have uh, a platform for sharing experiences, to, for learning, and uh, to come up with common action plans that can be taken forward. Uh, what we can mention as one of the best practice was um, having the youths uh, participate in policy uh, uh, processes uh, through this coalition as a platform and thereby they are able to pre present agroecology as an agenda uh, within the discussion of uh, agriculture and uh, able also to engage the policy makers at different levels such that they can put across the agenda about agroecology. The Yalta initiative was really a good um, and timely uh, support for the youth because it uh, brought a new experience whereby the youth segment is uh, being now brought forward in discussion and also uh, being uh, mobilized to join agriculture as a uh, business. There was this aspect of networking and also mentoring uh, through the IALTA initiative, it came out clearly. The youth entrepreneurs uh, have improved from the level which they are. They have new skills, new, new knowledge, and they are able to package the information and also um, able to market their enterprises. So that was a good support through this uh, IALTA program. And uh, what I can mention about future plans and what we think of uh, this process of participating in uh, policies is that uh, we have to look forward on how we can strengthen youth in agroecology to be able to influence, uh, uh, increase participation of policy processes. Uh, that is to increase the number of youths who are able to present their agenda in uh, policy discussions. Uh, because if, if uh, the youths are not coming up when such space are provided, no one will present their agenda better than them. And one thing you should know is that uh, government all over the world operates from a policy framework. So whatever is not being put well in a policy framework, the government might, governments might not find it a way to implement, implement even if you continue to discuss it uh, within your social networks and uh, other platforms. Then we're also looking on how we can build a strong movement uh, of youth on agroecology, either uh, from national level to regional level and even continental level. We should be looking on forward on how to, we can mobilize the youth, build their capacity, uh, continue to engage in them and uh, educating them on the need to be able to build a movement and present their agenda in all spaces available so that the agenda can be put in the, into a concrete framework and all their support and uh, the ideas will be uh, actualized. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And we don't take that lightly. I had the issue of inclusion. It is something very pertinent to me. 
at every level we need to invite the youth to be part of the decision making let's go to Rwanda now Mbabazi the inclusion of the youth in the agro ecology research and education and my question to you is going to be quite blunt here I want to know what is the position of the youth in policy formulation to create a conducive environment from where you sit and stand what do you see Thank you very much, moderator. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Yeah, this is not easy to speak after lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope uh, you will do us a favor, yeah. and then we go together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, from where we stand as a, as a country, um, let me say, um, to begin with uh, the recent initiative that uh, was started by, uh, facilitated by uh, Yalta uh, of setting up the Rwanda Agroecology Actors. When you look at this, um, it was formed in, 2020, in 2020. This is uh, almost two months. It was after the COVID had started, but we were able to maneuver through. So uh, about 90% of the members of the agroecology uh, actors group are youth. And that gives us hope uh, that we have started on the right point, on the right side of the coin. Um, there is, through uh, the lockdowns, we were able, as a group, uh, I, I forgot to mention that I happen to be the secretary to the steering committee of the, of the group. Yeah, so we've been able to engage universities and high learning institutions. Uh, we have to deliver the message about agroecology. Uh, what we have uh, discovered is that within uh, the curriculum in uh, higher learning institutions and uh, universities, uh, much of the work is uh, drills on conservation. Agroecology is a term that uh, is not driven through the curriculum. So this, um, from that observation, we visited nine institutions and we have come up with an action plan to continue to engage universities, engage government, uh, to include curriculum uh, sorry, to include agroecology in the curriculum. Uh, we know it takes a while, but we've uh, laid a ground for a soft landing uh, through uh, conducting awareness uh, campaigns in schools, forming clubs for agroecology, and uh, continuing a participatory approach through uh, organizing workshops, uh, seminars that bring uh, the youth, engage the youth to create more awareness about agroecology so that in our advocacy work, uh, we go in with the youth. So far, um, this is uh, yielding um, good results because Today, as we speak, you find through each and every channel, because we have youth councils, we have uh, different uh, youth groups, uh, we have uh, different uh, young entrepreneurs forum, and the youth are taking a center stage to understand agroecology and this gives us hope that 
they are going to shape policy and shape uh, also the teaching of agroecology within the curriculum of the next generation. Wow. Thank you so much. Let's clap for that. If Randa takes up this, you never know. Coming to you, Haji Ranan, to me, um, I want to know, how do we lobby for more integration of research in agroecology by government research institutions as well as the academia? How do we merge the two? Thank you very much, moderator. Mm. I would think we have the various youth structures in place. For instance, we have the Young Farmers Federation of Uganda. Mm -hmm. Through that forum, we can gather the opinions, mm -hmm. the views of the youth regarding our cultural extension. Mm -hmm. And we can as well try to, to utilize the different youth committees at village, parish, and district levels mm -hmm. so that they can always try to represent the youth in the different <coughs> uh, platforms that really uh, inquire and require the youth Mm -hmm. to engage in our culture extension and academia. Uh, we could also look at um, the universities. Mm -hmm. Usually they have the clubs for the particular courses. So we would look <coughs> at maybe, maybe our culture extension in this case, so that we can build their capacity mm -hmm. right from the grassroots to the top. Mm. Uh, we would also look at um, getting in touch with um, the Department of Agriculture Extension and the uh, Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry, and Fisheries, mm -hmm. so that they can try to, to fund some of the youth businesses engaged in agriculture extension uh, the, the government should as well try to put in place scholarship programs for, for people interested in taking uh, a culture extension as a profession in terms okay. of academia mm. so that they can be refined further in that subject matter. Mm. Uh, as well, uh, Pelham, Uganda, which is the host of uh, Yalta in mm. Uganda also participated in the review mm. of the National <coughs> Agricultural Extension Strategy. And this strategy looks at promoting and supporting youth businesses within agroecology. So mm. I think that is also another platform for us to utilize. Mm. Wow. Clap for her. That makes a lot of sense. If we have any representative from Maif, you had the issue of extension workers. Actually, we need them very, very urgently. Friends, this panel had to end at 3.15. Check your clock. I don't know whether we're on time. Are we on time? I love time. I love time. Let's clap for them again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you so much, Matthew. Thank you so much, Mbabazi. And um, thank you so much, Hajara. So we are going in our breakout sessions. These sessions are going to be only four. Let me request Ruth Nabagala to come forward. I'm going to show you the, the facilitators of these breakout sessions. Um, you can take back your seats, please. Let's clap for them, Douglas. Asante, Asante. Let me have Ruth Nabagala, Robert Golova, Richard Mugisha. Let me have these three come here. So we are going to three groups. Let me see those who want to be in the market access. By show hands. If you want to be in the market access, we are going to breakout sessions. Market access. Uh huh. Okay. Seeing you. Adoption on AE principles. Adoption on AE principles. 
Okay. Creating conducive environment. Let me see by show of hands. Ah, yeah. So now that I have these three, let me request Ruth to come at the far end. Uh, space yourselves. And the rest of us, let's first stand up. Let's all of us stand up. Let's all of us stand up. Just make sure you have space where you are, right? Make sure you have space where you are. This is a youth summit. You people are not going to slumber here when I'm here. It won't happen. <laughs> okay. So we are going to get some mangoes. The best mangoes in Kenya in Taveta. Sindio? Hey. Kiambu? Kwambali? Ukambani? Ah, yeah. We are getting mangoes. Where you are, you have some mangoes up. Let's all raise up our left hand, rather our right hand. Let's pick the mango up. Let's get one mango. Put it before your basket in front of you. Take the right hand. Get another mango. Put it before you. Now there is a mango that is a little bit up there. Just raise your hand and we go one, two, three. We get the mango. Down. Put it in the basket. Just get another hand. There is another and a little bit higher. A little bit higher. We're going to go one, two, three. Go up. Get the mango. Put it in the basket. Now there is one that is very close there. That just fell. Just pick the mango down. Just pick the mango from down. Just pick the mango from down. Put that mango in the basket. Put that mango in the basket. You may take your seats now. Ah, yeah. You, you won't sleep. This is a youth summit. And some of us who are hustlers, we know how to go around this. Sindio? Ah, yeah. So, we have three breakout sessions. The first one is going to be facilitated by Ruth Nabagala. Market access. Raise your hands if you want to be part of the market access. So, market access, you're going to be with her. And um, you're going to go in Muyenga Hall 1. You will go out there, then you'll come back this side. You'll see Muyenga Hall 1. Then we have adoption on AE principles. By Chauvin's, those who are going in that session. One, two, three. Please, if, you, if you're not there, okay. Ah, yeah. You're going to be taken by Robert Golova, the one at the far end. Yes, agroecology. And the very last one is going to be facilitated by Richard Mugisha, creating a conducive environment by show of hands. Now, those ones who are going for this, creating a conducive environment, you're going to stay here, okay? But the ones who are going with Robert Golova, you will go out and you go above, there is a restaurant on the other side. It's this side? Okay, Muyenga 3 is equally this side. So Muyenga 1, Muyenga 3, you're going this side. Here, we are going to retain, um, this is a chisache. Yes, we are going to retain creating a conducive environment. Then, the invited guests, we are going to go to the boardroom. Hey. The invited guests, we are going to go to the boardroom on the other side. You'll just go through there. Now, above the restaurant, there is a boardroom. And it's going to be facilitated by Bente. So, just find your group. And for all these sessions you're going to be having, it's going to be... Ah, yeah. Okay. So, we're going at 3.20. We're going to return at 4.20. I'm going to make visits in those sessions just to remind you about time. So those who are going to stay here, uh, that is um, creating a conducive environment, please stay. But those going to, those going with Ruth, Ruth, kindly walk out with your people. Ah, yeah. Those going with Ruth, please, that is uh, Muyenga 1. And those going out with Robert Golova, that is Muyenga 3 hole. Then Richard is going to stay here with those who are going to deal with uh, creating a conducive environment. Then the invited guests, let's go on the other side in the boardroom. That will be facilitated by Bente. We have one hour and then we shall return. I'll be waiting for you. Enjoy. Enjoy.